was Jesus? Really, like who was he? Was he somebody worthy of us following him? Was he somebody that, that, that even existed? Some people question whether Jesus even existed. Now, I'm going to give you some feedback on what people think about Jesus because this is an old question. People have been dealing with this for a long time. But I want to make it contemporary for you. If you like the world of sports, if you like basketball, then let me give you a quote from Stephen Curry, you know, NBA all-star, about who Jesus is. Listen to his words. They are powerful. The man who died for our sins on the cross, that's who Jesus is. I know I have a place in heaven waiting for me because of him. And that's something no earthly prize or trophy could ever top. That's Stephen Curry on who is Jesus. Furthermore, he says, he says something else that was, was really amazing. He says, there's more to me than just the jersey I wear. And that's the Christ that's living in me. Pretty powerful words from a man who is at the top of his game and very well known. If you like baseball, let me give you an illustration from baseball. Albert Pujols. Listen to this quote from this incredible baseball player. Baseball is simply my platform to elevate Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. So to Pujols, Jesus Christ is his Lord and his Savior. What about acting? What about movies? Everyone knows Sylvester Stallone, Rambo, and, and all the other movies. And, uh, and maybe I'm dating myself with all the Rambo and stuff. But still, he's a well-known actor. He knows who Jesus Christ is. Listen to his words. The more I go to church and the more I turn myself over to the process of believing in Jesus and listening to his word and having him guide my hand, I feel as though the pressure is off me now. Wow, those are powerful words. Hey, listen, for the younger audience, for the younger audience, even Chuck Norris knows who Jesus is, all right? Chuck Norris knows who Jesus is. Chuck Norris said the following, real men do live for Christ. For him, Jesus Christ is his Lord and his Savior. Now, not everybody has that high opinion of Jesus. Not everyone has that elevated opinion of Jesus. There have been philosophers and there have been thinkers who did not think so highly about him. For example, Bertrand Russell, the famous British philosopher, uh, now deceased. His words in an essay that he wrote entitled, Why I Am Not a Christian, are pretty strong words about Jesus. Listen to what he says. I cannot myself feel that either in the matter of wisdom or in the matter of virtue, Christ stands quite as high as some other people known in history. I think I should put the Buddha and Socrates above him in those respects. Now I want you to stop and take a minute and think about this. Really? Seriously? So you're going to say that the Buddha was more virtuous than Jesus and that Socrates was wiser than Jesus. Let's think about that for a minute. If you've read the, the Buddha's story, he, he, this guy grew up in a palace with all of the immorality accessible to him, all of the excesses, all of the pleasures that this world has to offer, in which he engaged openly. That's history. That's a fact. Until he had an experience. When he had that experience, he decided he was going to live a life of piety and, 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 and purity and, and, and be undefiled. Hey, but what about all the stuff you did before? You're going to tell me that he's more virtuous than Jesus, who was born and died sinless? How about Socrates and wisdom? Socrates would be the first one to gasp at the idea because Socrates himself admitted that there was so much he did not know. And yet we want to say that he was wiser than Jesus? I have issues with that. So, you know, not, but not everybody's a fan. I get it. I mean, some college professors are really, really, really out to get Jesus. There's a professor in Miami-Dade College in Miami where I live who, who's famous for, being, for going after Jesus. Now, he's a great philosophy professor. He's, in, he's engaging. He's funny. The, in Rate My Professor, he constantly gets high ratings. Uh, but every year he does a lecture on a, uh, to the college, an open forum to the college, and sometimes he goes after Christianity, he goes after the Bible, he goes after Jesus. He did an, a lecture in 2010 called The Evil Jesus. The Evil Jesus, that was the name of the lecture, the title of the lecture. And listen to what he says, just a summary, a quick quote from the lecture. Jesus was a communist, a racist, 
pro-slavery, anti-gay, and will kill anyone who doesn't believe in him. Wow. Now, if I would have been in the audience, and I wasn't, but I knew people who were there, I would have asked, can you show me that in Scripture? Like, we know about Jesus because there's four Gospels that give us his biography. Where in those four Gospels have you found support for any of these ideas? Because I've read them, and it's not there. Now, you can make up all this stuff you want, but if you're going to evaluate somebody and judge him so harshly, you should at least have evidence to back it up, not just your feelings and your ideas about what Jesus is like. So there's obviously no evidence for this. So the, these kind of uh, attacks on, on Jesus is what, precisely what makes us wonder, okay, who was Jesus? Like, how do we even engage that idea? And, and the most popular idea around, which I'm sure you've heard, by many people who are spiritual, people who are religious, people that are not necessarily Christian, but they're open to a lot of ideas, they will tell you that Jesus was a good teacher. He wasn't God, he wasn't the Messiah, but he was a good teacher. And so I love C.S. Lewis's response to that because C.S. Lewis used to be an atheist and C.S. Lewis became a Christian and he was a brilliant philosopher. And in his book, Mere Christianity, he gives a perfect response to that. He shows us why, reasonably speaking, that's the one thing we cannot believe about Jesus. We cannot say that Jesus was a good teacher if in fact he was not the Messiah and God. So how does he present this argument? C.S. Lewis says it as follows. It's on page 55 and 56 of Mere Christianity. Allow me to read this quote to you. I am trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish things that people often say about him, Jesus. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. Guys, that is the one thing we must not say. He goes on to say, a man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would rather be a lunatic on the level of a man who says he's a poached egg or else he would be the devil of hell himself. You must make your choice, C.S. Lewis says. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else he's a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. Do you, do you get the gist of C.S. Lewis's argument? C.S. Lewis is telling us, listen, if somebody goes around saying they're, they're God and they are not God, then they're not a good moral teacher. They're either crazy because they believe they're God and they're delusional, or they're evil and wicked and they're trying to manipulate people into thinking they're God when they know they're not. So the fact that Jesus walked around saying that he was God only gives us three choices. He either was God, or he was a madman, or he was an evil man. And I think the evidence of the resurrection, which we will consider in a few minutes, points to the fact that he was not a madman. I think the cross points to the fact that he was not an evil man. I believe the only option we're left with is believing that he is the Messiah.